Welcome to another day of cooking. We are working today from the book Whole Bowls. Let me just show that to you. Here is the Whole Bowls book written by Allison Day who also runs a blog, Yummy Beat. We today are making a peanut tofu curry. There's no picture. I always feel like there's no picture when it's kind of like one color. Um, so we are mid-process right now. This is a super easy dish if you've done a little bit of prep. And by the way, she makes a note that you could make this dish up to four days ahead. So when you're talking about, you know, how do I look at my week? How do I structure and plan? Part of it is doing like the menu prep ahead of time, doing your grocery shopping ahead of time. Another thing that I did this week, I took my cauliflower and put it into quote unquote bite sized pieces ahead of time. So one of these days, I'm actually gonna make a blog post on how I cut up cauliflower because I don't like cutting cauliflower that much. Um, they actually vary from one cauliflower to the next in terms of how I do it, but I could still show you a little bit. So right now, I am in the process of putting together my sauteed onion with a little coconut oil. So it's two onions and two tablespoons of coconut oil going round and round in that pot. When you're using a, a Dutch oven like this, I don't turn it all the way to high. It's to medium because these pots conduct heat really well. So you don't have to do a lot to make that work for you. Um, I've also gone ahead and prepped my tofu. So this is a double batch. It's two 12 ounce diced. Uh, one of them I bought pre-diced and another one I diced myself. Uh, it's just whatever the store has on hand, whatever um, is how I end up using it. And then I have my spices ready to go. So this is two tablespoons of curry powder, a teaspoon of garam masala, and a teaspoon of salt. Um, the recipe called for two teaspoons of salt per batch. So I've taken that salt intake down by 75% on purpose. But I went ahead and doubled the other things um, because they should be fine. Um, also, we're going to end up adding... Some coconut milk. So I have two cans for a double batch. We're going to add four tablespoons of peanut butter, I think, and then four tablespoons of tomato paste. Let me make sure I'm telling you the truth. Yes, yes indeed. So we get a little break from peeling garlic. If you've been with me like all of last week, so much garlic peeling. So I am thankful for a little break from that. Also, I have rice going already in a rice cooker. So I'm making a lot of rice, five cups of rice. They often say like a quarter cup more of water. I have seven cups of water in there. I just feel like I don't want dry rice at the end of the day. So after sauteing your onion so that it starts to become translucent, you add in your spices and that you're gonna move around quickly in order to let them release their flavor going to add the first bit of color in the pan as well. And your tomato paste is going to add a bit of color. Um, if you wanted to grab some extra color, honestly, a little bit of spinach in here or some red pepper uh, would be a really great addition. And I may actually do that. I may add a little, well, do I even have spinach? I definitely have peppers. So I may do that a little bit later on because your cauliflower is going to go for a while. So spices don't need a lot of time to get their aromatic flavor. You're talking like 30 seconds or so. So once those are in there, the salt's in there, we're going to whisk in our milk. And one of these is a cream because that's what I had on hand. So it's going to be a little thicker, but not horribly. And the recipe actually says you could use full fat or light. It's really your call. Her point is just that the recipe will cook up regardless. So when I use the coconut cream, there's like this much really thick cream. When I use the milk, it's more of a milky consistency throughout. Um, back when we were letting go of dairy, we tried a billion things in our coffee. I actually liked coconut cream pretty well, but when we were using wet, uh, when we were using cold coffee, then it didn't break up very well. So I just had some extra on hand. There's nothing to do with it. It'll add some beautiful texture to this meal. So that's fine. Okay, as that coconut milk is going in, 
I can also stir in my tomato paste. So I'm going to measure this out really generously, <laughs> not leveling it at all, just to kind of give you a sense of how I work. Um, there's another one. It's not level either. I'm just too busy for all that. So my feeling is that each little can of tomato paste gives you about six tablespoons, if that's helpful information to you. I do need to rinse this so I can use it for my peanut butter. So I'm over here. I always have a wet tablespoon and a dry tablespoon on hand, so this one is functioning as my wet. It means I can just rinse it and keep going in my recipe. Um, if you work with natural peanut butters, as I often do, these tend to have more oil on top and less on the bottom. So you can give them a stir, you can bring your knife down a little farther. Some people like to turn them upside down. I don't really like turning mine upside down because it gets oil everywhere. Um, but here again, I'm not being super picky. I do want to get that four tablespoons, but four, you know, four tablespoons and a teaspoon. I'm cool with that too. So they're kind of heaping for me. And then I'm just going to go over again and rinse my hand because I've got my hand all dirty. Cooking is such a sensory experience, which I am not the type of person that's like, ooh, let me get dirty. Like, I just, <laughs> I don't play in dirt. When I go to the beach, I'm very careful about the sand. So, these are always like little <laughs> challenges for sensory people. But you get through it. If I can get through it, you can get through it. I promise you. So here, all of this is now in the pan, this peanut butter and tomato paste. And I'm just going to, you can whisk it as the directions say. I'm breaking it up right now just by pushing my spatula down, and that's fine too. I kind of just get sick of doing so many dishes. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, I'll use all the dishes, I'll do it exactly as they say, and sometimes I play around in different ways, and this is one of those different ways. So really what you're doing though is incorporating the peanut butter and the tomato sauce in. You can kind of see, it's got that yellowish hue to it. The tomato isn't so intense that it's gonna create a red sauce, but because of your curry, because of your peanut butter, and then a little bit with that tomato paste, you get more of a yellowish, light brown color. Tomato paste is really thick, so really with the peanut butter and the tomato sauce and the heavier coconut cream, you're going to get a really thick sauce. So it's going to have a pretty strong coconut feel to it. I'm just working my way through that liquid, pushing down to get rid of all of the lumps in the tomato paste. Um, I've also found like if I was working with a dish with a lot of vegetables, just going like so over the top where the vegetables and the tomato paste meet helps to break up that tomato paste enough. So that's reasonable. You've got your sauce going. And I think really once that cauliflower gets in there, that'll be the end of that. From this point, you can add in your tofu and your cauliflower. So um, when you buy it cubed, your tofu, you're really buying it cubed so that you're done when you open the package. It doesn't take that much work to cut your own though, so you know, do what you feel like you need to or what you have energy for in any particular week. Uh, no judgment for me either way because I do both. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just what's on hand. I mean, the cauliflower, you know, I was taking like the last of the cauliflower available. There wasn't zucchini this week, so later on this week I'll make a zucchini meatball recipe and instead of zucchini, it's yellow summer squash. But they're kind of the same food group, they're the same family, so it'll work. So this recipe calls for a half of a large head or one small head. I am always exceptionally generous with my vegetables. So this was three heads of cauliflower I'm not doing a half of a large head or whatever. Uh, and then I'll just leave a little bit of that in the bottom. But I'm estimating that that is about two heads. And this is gonna need time to soften. So we're gonna put it all together. You see you've got that peanut buttery look, right? And it's gonna coat all of your cauliflower. When you serve this, we're almost done because this will just simmer, your rice will finish. And when you're done, it's rice in the bowl, 
this mixture in a bowl and sprinkle some chopped peanuts on top for your garnish and you're done. <clears throat> now you could sprinkle also some fresh cilantro if you had it. I wouldn't recommend parsley. I don't think that's the right flavor. Um, but you could do a little fresh cilantro on top for color as well. Um, that would be beautiful. And like I said, you want to add some extra veggies in there. Throwing in a little bit of red pepper would be a nice touch. I think orange or yellow pepper would just be more of the same. Or a little bit of greenery. So if you had some baby kale or if you had some spinach or some Swiss chard, uh, any of those things would be really pretty and would give it a pop of color because part of the fun of cooking healthy is actually it's so beautiful it's so colorful but not every dish this one is really tasty i mean who doesn't want some coconut and some peanut butter action going i think it's just a beautiful thing those flavors put together so after that's all mixed together cover and cook 20 to 25 minutes so i have this big pot if i had been doing a smaller batch I might use one of those saucepans that's about this deep with a lid. They often come in sets. I used to have one, um, it wore out, and so when I replaced it, I replaced it with this giant skillet, but it didn't have a lid. So today, because I'm making a double batch, this is actually a great way to go. Um, also, just a big, like kind of what I would use to make soup, a big stock pot, would work fine as well. So when they say like, oh, put it in this, what do they call? A large pot. Right, a large pot could be what I would normally boil pasta in. Um, this is fine. Or one of those kind of wider skillet saucepans. Would, all of those would work just fine. But because I don't want it to like kind of burn to the bottom, I'll turn it down to like a four. Uh, I can actually set a timer for 20 minutes so that I don't forget. And then I'll probably at the end, because I don't want my peppers to get too soft, I'll probably like five minutes in before it's done, I'll go ahead and throw in a little bit of red pepper. But that's all of it because when this cooks, I'm just going to fluff it up and put it in the bowl. My peanuts, um, sometimes we don't even chop them in our house. It's just like too much work. So you can go ahead and create that garnish while you're waiting. But when this is done, for me, it can sit here for a few hours. You could put it in your fridge, come back and just warm up bowls as you need them. And obviously, like for us, these become meals. that They become lunch the next day. They go into thermoses. So that is the peanut tofu curry. Thank you so much for being with me, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.